My name is Anita Worth It Lodge, and I would just like to thank you for tuning in to Beacon Light Ministry. I want you to pray with me. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, as we approach you, you are our eternal Father. And Lord, as we come before your presence in Jesus' name, Father, we come humbly, but we come, God, desiring to have dinner with you, to have lunch and breakfast with you. So, Lord, as we impart in your word, as the ministry of the word go forth, anoint our ears that we might hear what your spirit say. God, open up the ears of our heart, God, that we will receive your instructions today. And, Father, we thank you, God, for your promise that is attached to it. God, you said blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm. You said that your word would not go out void, that it will accomplish that that you sent it to do. So, Lord, we just say thank you in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Our scripture reference today is coming from Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Come on, get your books, get your pads, and write it down. Matthew 22, 8 through 12, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, then he said to his servant, the wedding feast is ready. But those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servant went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? Friend, the man was speechless. Our word for today is, admit it, you don't see clothes. In our present culture, everybody's preoccupied with declaring his or her individual rights, individual uh, freedoms to do this or to do that. Judges 17, 6, Judges 21, 25 declared, in those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Today, people are so bold and in declaring their opinions about every little thing. And their assertiveness has gone beyond normal boundaries of what we call just good taste or good manners to the point that they are so militant, especially in regard to others who, who do not share their same idea. Because of technology, Social media has provided a platform for the unasserted to appear to be bold and asserted, usually not for a really godly reason. The sharing of ideas, information through networks like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, as the kids tell me now, TikTok, Clubhouse, and, and the list goes on. It has caused people to have an overload of information. So we are exactly like the people Paul described in the last days in 2 Peter, the third chapter, 7th verse, it reads, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We are forever looking and following new teachings, but still not able to understand the truth. As believers, we have taken the back seat from boldly confronting unrepentant sin, but a sold out believer will be asserted and will risk his or her popularity in order to say what needs to be said for the good of a person. You remember the funny little classic story that was entitled the emperor's new clothes. Everybody remember that if you had children. There was two con, the two con artists 
tricked the emperor to buy clothes that were so grand, so beautiful, that no one would be able to see them. They claimed that the clothes would be fine and beautiful, and they would be so nice that they would be invisible to everyone who was stupid or incompetent. That's where we are now. They're calling people that don't go along with their agenda. They say you're stupid and incompetent. In the story goes, everyone in the kingdom saw the king without clothes. But for fear of being accused of being stupid and incompetent, they sang false praises of the emperor's fine clothes. And finally, as the child, Everybody just singing, oh, they're so nice. Oh, your clothes are fantastic. Oh, I love them. He had on no clothes. But finally, there was a child. And he said, one child. But doesn't he know that he don't have on anything? When everybody heard that, they realized that if an innocent child is saying this, then it must be be true. The emperor finished the procession and everybody knew that he was wearing nothing but pride. Are you wearing pride today? Yeah, you got on clothes. Hallelujah. But do you have on clothes of pride? And nobody's bold enough to tell you that if you die today, you're going to hell. And people don't like to hear that. But here it is in this tale, the entire kingdom that ignored the obvious for fear of judgment only to call on out, only to be called out by a child. The moral of the story is that we can't let pride keep us from speaking up when we know the truth. Saints, believers, children of the living God, God beloved, are we saying what people want us to say? Saints, are we afraid to use the word of God to correct something or someone because, it, it, because of their perceived wisdom, the wisdom of the mass, that, that that thing or that person is so important? Saints, have our leadership become so ambitious that we have become vain. Saints, have we confronted, have we conformed so much to the world that we call right wrong and wrong right? Saints, are we so obsessed with self? Saints, have we rationalized and convinced ourselves that human beings are basically good when the Bible says that we are desperately wicked? because of Adam. Saints, have we realigned our attitude, our beliefs, our behavior to what the individuals perceived as normal in society? Revelation 3.17 says, Jesus was reprimanding the churches. And there was one particular church. Remember, when he said churches, now the seven churches, he's talking about those that were basically followers. And he said to this church, Ephesus, he said, you say, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and I do not need a thing. But do you not know, do you not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked? Have we become like the emperor's new clothes? We're naked. Have we listened to voices that are saying you are, quote, okay? Have you listened to voices that, oh, because of lack of judgment, they have stepped of approval on what God has said is an abomination? I would, Revelation continue to say, I would that you buy me gold tried in the fire so that you can become rich, and white clothes to wear, white clothes, so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and your sad be put on your eye, 
so you can see? Look, Revelation 16, 15 said, look, I come like a thief. This is Jesus talking. He said, I'm coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stay awake and remain clothed so as not to go naked and be shameful, shamefully exposed. O oh, church of the living God, O oh, men of God, O oh, women of God, God is crying out to the church. He says, I, I see you. He said, but I see nakedness. He said, everybody else sees it too. And he's calling for us. He's calling. Look what it said. What other dramatic measure or global trauma has to take place before us, we got people, will humble ourselves, that we will seek his face, that we will pray, that we will turn from our wicked way? What else has to happen? Oh, body of Christ, let us stop covering our ears. In the book of Revelation, the seven, in the seven letters, it's a picture of the, of the seven kinds of churches that we in, our, in, in this age, and actually in any age, in any period of history, Jesus had been warning and encouraging. He's encouraging because he's telling you what you're doing right, but a, a father also tells you the things that you need to line up. And he's saying, this is what he's been saying. The trumpet is blowing. He said, repent and do the things you did first. He said, I come to you quickly. I will remove your candlestick from its place unless you repent. That word again. He said, I've given you time to repent of your Im immorality. But she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering. I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely. Unless they repent of her ways, I will strike her children. 2 Corinthians 5, 1 and 13. For we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building up from God an eternal house in heaven, not built with human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we are not found naked. God's calling is widespread now. The invitation is to many of his servants. The invitation has been extended. And those who respond, he's talking to those who he's extended an invitation to. He's talking to those that are said, accepted the invitation, but yet they don't have on their wedding garments. He's talking to those that have not accepted the invitation. And God is asking you a question as we close. Admit it. You're scared to die. Admit it. You don't have clothes on. Pray with me. Father God. God, as you've spoken to us today, and you're asking us, what voices have we been listening to? God has caused us to be unclothed. Open up our heart, give us a mind to repent. And Father, I thank you, God, for this word. God, I thank you, God, for pricking the hearts of us that we would say, Lord, what must I do to be saved in Jesus' name? Amen.